Hi everybody and welcome to this video. This is the first in the series. Today we're going to be covering uh, basic Unity interface and what each of those windows is and, and how I actually use that interface. So without going into too much detail, let's get started. So I'll just shrink myself out of the way here. Um, if you've not downloaded Unity yet, you need to go to the Unity website. I won't go into too much detail on this. I'm sure you can work out how to install the program. Uh, under products, use personal free, so that allows you to create games up to 100k per year, which if you're lucky enough to hit that, you should be able to afford the $25 per month. So you can use Unity personal, it's got pretty much every feature that you need in there. Um, there's not much that's limited in the Unity personal, so just download personal, download the Unity hub and start messing around with Unity. So I've gone and opened Unity and just a note on the versions you'll see up here I'm using 2019. I tend to try to keep up to date with the Unity version that I'm using otherwise you'll end up having a project built in Unity 5 or something and and never update it. If you constantly update your um, packages, your programs as new ones come out it tends to be a bit easier to upgrade. So I try to keep as up to date as possible unless I'm right at the end of a project and then I will leave it on the version that I'm on but I will probably update it later. So let's get started on the usual interface. This is the default layout that Unity will come with. I've just started a new lightweight render pipeline with VR. I'm a VR developer so I pretty much always jump into VR. And the lightweight render pipeline is a new way of rendering the graphics to the screen it's very performant it gives you a lot of control over the graphics and the output and the um the quality really you're, you're able to adjust a lot of things but we will probably cover that in another video so this is your simple interface as you can see everything is broken down into windows and each one of these windows will allow you to do something different so this is your main view window this is where you'll be doing the majority of your work moving your objects around placing them in your scene so this is called a scene view and you can create multiple scenes which is pretty much like a level um, and to move around in this inspector you can hold down the middle mouse button and that will allow you to pan around so this is useful for quickly sliding across the screen you hold your right mouse button down that will allow you to rotate now this rotates from the camera perspective so it rotates the camera to point wherever you're pointing if you hold down alt and use the left mouse button that will pan or rotate around the center of the screen the middle mouse button will zoom you in and out and they tend to be the main ones that i use so middle mouse button left and right look left and right with uh, your right mouse button, hold down alt and your left mouse and zoom in and out. Now there's some other ways if you hold down alt and right click you get a bit more fine tuning over your zoom whereas the middle mouse wheel tends to jump so if you're trying to get close to an object sometimes it jumps straight through like there whereas if you use the left mouse button you're able to uh, zoom in and out with a bit more fine control and we also use this to move objects around so left mouse clicking will select an object and then we can move this object around we'll cover these transforms uh, in a bit more detail later but you're able to move each of those around so the hierarchy window is essentially your your scene all the objects in your scene all in essentially layers or collections depending on what application you use to and we use this to um, manipulate and select objects in our scenes we probably want to keep this as tidy as possible it tend, it can get quite messy if you just add in lots of things so to create a folder or a new layer we can just right click and create an empty and that will create you an empty game object which has got no details in it except a transform and a rotation and a scale and if we click or double um, uh, click and then wait a little bit it'll allow you to rename it 
so we can rename this folder and then under here we can then start to create more and more um, game objects but you can see we can nicely tidy them away so that's your hierarchy window down here is your project window so this is everything that is available in your project and these are available obviously from different scenes and this is essentially your file explorer so this is everything that is in your file so if we right click on assets and click show in explorer you can see these folders here match up to everything that you've got inside here as well inside assets sorry um, so you can see we've got settings scripts and scenes now assets folder is essentially everything that is available in your project so everything you create is usually referred to as an asset of this unity project and if you want to add new things into this project you can drag and drop from file explorer or you can drag and drop into uh, into the file explorer itself so i've got let me just quickly open this so i've got a texture here that i want to bring into my program and i can either drag and drop this into the assets or i can drop it onto the window so i'm just going to drop it into here and you can see that's now available there. Now that's created a copy of this file. So it's moved the file, it's not just moved the file or created a reference, it's actually created a copy of this uh, file. So that's the very basics of your project folder. If we look in console, this gives us feedback on our game. So when we press play, we will be given information through this console. We're able to log information to the console. So while we're developing, maybe we want to know that something's actually happened. You can debug into here and you can throw errors and warnings or just a log file. And you're able to filter each of these by warnings um, or errors or just information. So just the logs that you've um, created. The other thing, let's cover gizmos. So gizmos are these little white things that you can see sort of floating in, in space here and these are different objects so this is a reflection probe and this is a light and you're able to turn these gizmos on and off by default i tend to have these on all the time but i adjust the size quite often so if you just click on this little down arrow you're able to control so if we untick 3d objects you can see that these sort of pop uh, to the front of the screen so they're always on top of the geometry regardless of where that is a 3d gizmo will will place that gizmo in space so you can see this back one is is now you can tell it's behind there and that's useful for lights to know whether the light is behind or in front of a object you can adjust the size with this slider um, this is what I tend to do I tend to leave them on 3d icons but if I'm wondering where something is and I can't see it I just quickly make them bigger or if I want to see my scene without them, I just make them smaller. The show grid is this grid that you can see here, and it's by default each one of these grids is one meter, but then you're able to adjust that in the inspector. And the outline is when I select an object. So if I select this, let's select this frame here, you can see it's outlined this object in orange to let you know that you've picked it. You can turn that off and it won't show or you can select press wire frame and that will show the wire frame of the object by default this is my settings i tend not to mess with this too much the default setting seems to work quite well and i've never really had to change that around the other interesting thing that i tend to use on here is this lighting setting so this will turn off the lighting and this is useful for when you're building a quite a dark game i've recently been building a horror game where it's very dark um, so with the scene lights turned on which will show all the nice um, shadows and will show you what your scene should look like in when the game is running it's very difficult if you're using a dark scene so this is really handy to just be able to turn that off and see exactly what's going on in your scene your inspector over here is all the detail about whichever object you've selected so if we select this paint can down here this brings up all the information so you can see it's got a transform a mesh a mesh renderer 
and it's got three materials assigned. We'll cover these in more detail in other videos. But for now, you just need to know that in your inspector, that's where you would adjust any of these properties. Some interesting things about these are you can, if you hover over, you'll see the little lines come up and down. So you're able to drag and drop these. You're also able to do calculations in these thing in these fields. So if I type one, and it's probably a better example if I have something like this, but I want to multiply that, I can just go to the end and type multiply by two, and that will do the calculation for you. So that's very handy. Um, so we can do 200 times six if we wanted to, and it will just do that calculation. So you don't have to in your head work out what minus 0 0.301 multiplied by 6 is it will just do all that for you the other interesting thing is these tags I don't actually use these too much uh, let me just turn gizmos up which now they seem to have disappeared oh there we go it's because they were unticked um, these allow you to tag certain objects in your screen and you can see I've tagged this paint 5g bucket as this yellow selection this is useful for quickly finding items in your scene maybe if you've got multiple enemies in your scene that you want you want to tag them all with this sort of purple so you know that what that is i don't use this too often but it is there if you need it the other thing that is interesting about this is layouts now i do use layouts um this is the default layout that comes with Unity. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this layout. I think there's far too much space taken up for your project. Um, there's a number of windows squashed up up here. So the game window is your game view, what it would look like to the camera that is in the scene. And I, I like to have this separate. So I've created my own layout. So if I open my base layout, this is the layout that I generally work from. It's got pretty much everything I need to develop. Uh, it's very multi-purpose, but this is useful for creating your own sort of views. And you can just save these layouts. So whenever you get a layout that you like, drop this down, press save layout, and you're given this option. And if I just name this base layout too and press save, you can see it's there. So whichever one of these layouts works best for you you're able to create your own and just quickly jump between them i've used this a number of times for when i'm doing different levels and i want to be maybe focusing on the animation so i'll create an animation layout and um and then i can jump back to like my modeling layout and stuff so th these are useful so i suggest you sort of work through these and and have a look at them there's other windows available. So in your window, uh, you will have there's many different windows that you will use. We won't go through all of them here. I'm sure you can work out what some of these are, and we'll probably cover them in a bit more detail in some of the other parts of these series. But you can pop open one of these. So let's say we want another scene window. Oh, that's just moving into the scene window. So let's um, let's say we want to use a profile window. That will bring us a profiling window and now you can drag and drop this wherever you want so we can let's say we want to put this in here that will add that into there if you want to bring it out just hover somewhere over the middle of the um of our window and that will allow you to pop it into a outer window and then if we want it down here you just drag to the bottom and that will place it there so you just you can just move these around pretty much get in the layout however you want whatever works for you the other nice thing is if you want a big scene window you can take all these off so you can just drop your project off drag this down and this would give you a nice big screen window to be working from and when you finish you can just jump back to the normal layout that you're working with so i think that should cover everything really for the inspector a very quick overview of of how to manipulate those windows and what each of those windows is. So I hope that was useful for you. I will continue this tutorials and we'll create some more simple ones. Thank you very much.